Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit the subscribe and the notification bell before you go any further and realize how fucking garbage this content is. And if this is not your first time on the channel, you may want to give your head a wobble. So for today's video, we are taking a look at my Lost World Dino deck profile. A going second variant that's taken some influence from one lists I've seen online, which we'll get to in a moment, and I've chopped it up a little bit for my own locals and the kind of format that we're playing in there and thereabouts. Now it's nothing too crazy, nothing too spicy, but it does work really well for the most part, unless you're me and you're just really unlucky and just brick all the fucking time. Seriously, mathematically, it shouldn't be this possible to brick, yet here we are. Now, like most people, I'm definitely going to be exploring the possibilities of going over to a scrap dino variant in the coming week or two, particularly in the lead up to the new format. I highly suspect that the deck isn't going to get touched in any kind of way. I really don't see it happening. So fortunately, I do think we're going to be able to play this deck for a little while longer. And I definitely think that the scrap variant may well be the way to go. Just be able to pop stupid amounts of babies and go absolutely wild. Now, if you're watching today's video and you're feeling inspired to pick up some Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, or maybe even some Pokemon ones for that matter, you should check out the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. There will be a link down in the description to their eBay store, and if you go ahead and use that, you'll get yourself a cheeky discount on all their singles, courtesy of yours truly. But that most certainly is enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck in to the deck profile. Of course, we have these bad boys at the ready. Okay, so here we have it, guys. Hopefully this image is clear enough for you. The light in this room is a little bit off. I can make some adjustments, but I'm not sure how much they help. I do need to work on that a little bit, but there you go. Hopefully you can see everything clearly in either case. Now, as alluded to earlier, I have borrowed quite generously from a list that I'd seen online that I've been using as a basis for my own list, which I've now gone and tweaked for my own locals, and we'll get to all of those details in a minute. So the list was from LCS13. I think it was Christian Thomas, it might have been. Second place finish in the 3v3. Um, his build were, it was great, I'm sure, for that event. But there was a few things that just didn't work particularly well for my own locals and the kind of decks that people were playing. I know there was a lot of concern around the likes of uh, Dragon Link and things like that. Whereas there's only really one guy who plays Dragon Link at my locals. Most people are playing other decks like Prang Kids and things like that. So uh, we've had to change things up a little bit. There's a massive representation for Invoke Shadol. So I built with a little bit of that in mind as well. But again, we'll get to all of those details in a minute. So as you might expect, we're going to start off this profile by going through the monsters first. So we'll start off with all the dinos and go through that package. So two copies of Ultima Conductor Tyranno. Two is absolutely perfect. You really don't need a third. There's very rare occasions where a third does come up. Like, for example, if you've bricked and you maybe have to banish one of these to get the other one off a pill or something like that. That kind of weird scenario has come up for me. But for the most part, two is perfectly fine other than when that happens. There's not much you can do, but this card is still insanely strong. And definitely one that you want to finish on in your turn one. If you can, try and remember to put it in defense mode so you don't get lightning stormed. Especially if you're going first. It does happen. After that, we have a single copy of Pancratops at one, so that's exactly what we're going to play. Like I say, this is a going second build, so main in Pancratops is an absolute must. We then have triple copies of Soli in Oviraptor. You need to play three copies, there's no question of this. Without this, this deck doesn't exist. It's impossible to play without triple Oviraptor. You need to see, you want to see this as quickly as possible. We're effectively running, uh, I don't know, six copies and, and then some. Uh, obviously, if you include the babies, it's more than that. But effectively, six plus copies of this card. You need to see it. It's just absolutely insane. We're then running the worst rarity of Miscellaneousaurus. The guy saw it'd be fucking hilarious to hook me up with the, uh, the garish fucking gold rares, if that's what you want to call them. Uh, they're just absolutely disgusting. They just telegraphed to my opponents what I've got in my hand, which is great. Uh, I absolutely love giving away free information. Thanks, Jam Jam Cards UK. If you need any singles at a discount, go check out the eBay store so they can buy me some real fucking Miscellaneousaurus. Contrary to popular belief, it isn't correct to run two. I know when I did the remote door before I ran two, that's because I actually lost my third copy. Although I did open it every game, so that was nice. Unfortunately, when you play three, you don't open it every game, and that's very sad. Running a single copy of Giant Rex. It's here as a combo piece. Uh, it's here as a level four body. It's, yeah, it's all of that sort of stuff. A lot of the time, this just ends up on a board, not really doing a whole lot. Um, but yeah, it's good. It's good enough for what it is. 
We're then running double copies of Animadorn Arcasaur. In the past, I used to run just a single copy of this because I didn't like uh, and I ended up having multiples. It didn't really see that much use, but a lot of the time I was also running slightly different variants. And I think in this particular one, you need to see two copies of this because you want to resolve it multiple times in the duel. Uh, just digging into your pills or being able to just get free bodies on board, that kind of thing. It's just a very good card and there's a reason it has the price tag that it does. We then have double copies of Baby Cerasaurus. Two copies is perfectly fine in this particular build. When we do transition over to the scrap one, I would highly recommend running a third. At least from what I've seen so far, that seems to be the way to go because you can just keep popping these things. It's absolutely crazy. I would not be surprised if any card did get hit in this deck that it was this. If this got hit to one, I would not be surprised at all. And then a single copy of Petit Tyranodon. Uh, yeah, you just need the one copy. It's more than enough. I wouldn't run without it. It does come up occasionally. Um, it's not as good as the normal baby, but it, it, it comes up enough to be worth running. We then move on to our hand traps. We've got Triple Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, uh, the most generic hand trap that hits the most decks. Uh, it's Ash. I, I really don't need to elaborate on that. Running triple copies of Gamma. This is absolutely insane. I often side this out after game one, but game one it can be so important, particularly if you do choose to go second. It can be such a blowout, particularly when people play in Alistair and the like. It just it can end their turn on the spot and usually means you can follow up and just kill them. Mandatory driver to go with it because, you know, fuck this card. And then finally, a single copy of Artifact Scythe. Now, I fucking love and hate this card. It's fantastic in that it just ends your opponent's turn, but I cannot tell you how often I see this in my opening hand. It's absolutely fucking unreal. There's no way mathematically it should happen as much as it does, but it does. So... A bit of the bane of my existence, but also really, really cool in this deck. And it is one of those cards I think you just... You have to evaluate how many games you're winning with it versus how many you're uh, you're losing by bricking on it. And uh, it seems to be just enough to be worth running. And next up we have the spell lineup, which just so happens to make up the rest of the deck. We have triple copies of Lost World. You need to run it at three. This card is absolutely bonkers. There have been lists... That I've done in the recent past where I've ran less than three of this. It's just, it's incorrect. You need to run three out. It's absolutely wrong. Three Lost World is so important. It's so sad when you don't see this, but when you do, it's insane. There's so many decks, particularly rogue ones, that just cannot deal with your board if you have this card. Uh, it can start your combos off where you otherwise can't get into them. It offers you protection. It offers you the ability to beat over your opponent's cards easier. It's just really fucking strong. You need to run four copies of it because we also run the terraforming as well. Pretty self-explanatory. It's just a must run. I would genuinely consider running the likes of Mystic Mind in here because I'm a fucking degenerate, but I don't have it in here in this particular build. But genuinely, you can just free win games with it as well. So maybe keep that in mind. We have another one of in Call by the Grave. Uh, Call by the Grave is quite strong. It doesn't come up a lot because it's at one. So we don't get to see it a lot. It's unsearchable, but it's really powerful when it goes off. I would really like to see this card go back to three, but whilst it's at one, we're going to run one copy. We have two copies of Double Evolution Pill. Two is plenty, three is way too many, and one is not enough. Two is the sweet spot. You want to be able to keep resolving your Arcasaur. A lot of the time, you actually don't ever get to use the second one of this because you just don't. Uh, you run out of really good targets or any targets at all. But you do get to keep resolving Arcasaur, which can be broken in and of itself. So, yeah, you have to run two copies in my opinion. Triple copies of Fossil Dig. Uh, I, I, pretty self-explanatory, right? It searches over Raptor. It does everything that you need. Of course, it searches other dinos, which comes up plenty, but OV is going to be the main target for this one. Now we're going second deck, and we're most definitely not budget-friendly. We're running Triple Lightning Storm in here. This guy is absolutely insane. The amount of games this wins you is just its just ridiculous. It's the fact that it's a Feather Duster or a Regeki depending on what you need. You can literally just clear your opponent's board and kill them in one shot. If you're running against back row heavy decks, GG, they just lose on the spot. They lose all their advantage. The amount of times decks will just set four and then pass against me and I just drop this and they lose. It's just ridiculous. And speaking of back row wipes, you've got one copy of Harpy's Feather Duster. Uh, it's Harpy's Feather Duster. I really don't need to go into too much detail. And then to round off the main deck, we have triple copies of Pot of Prosperity. I used to think Extravagance was a superior card until I started actually playing this. The value of this card is absolutely unreal. In a deck like this where you can see any one card and you have access to an entire engine, especially when you brick, is absolutely insane. We've got so many easy targets to just banish off the extra deck that we really don't give a fuck. And being able to choose one of those six cards is infinitely better than just drawing two random ones. Honestly, it makes such a difference. It's absolutely insane. Don't get me wrong, there's definitely decks where Extravagance is the best better option but for this one you absolutely need to be playing pot of prosperity there is no secondary option that you can really go with 
And that does round off our main deck at a solid 40 cards. Usually I play an upstart goblin, so I like to play 39, but honestly, 40 is perfectly fine in this. So onto the extra deck here, and this is where all the differences start coming in. Uh, token and field center, you don't really, I mean, you need those, but you don't. Anyway, uh, so this is where the differences start to creep in a little bit. Not too many different from the list that I'd seen online. One or two little changes just depending on what I liked, and I'll go through those in a minute. So we start off with a single copy of Link Rebo. Uh, it's Link Rebo, you know exactly what it does. It's free materials in the graveyard for your pill. Uh, it gets rid of your Arcasaur. It means the Arcasaur can be banished then off with Misk and then get another baby and go from there. Uh, Secure Gardeners there. I honestly fucking hate this card. Uh, I really wish I didn't play it, but it, it does come up. It does come up occasionally, um, but it really does my fucking head in. Uh, I've had Dagda. This is to get your Scythe nice and easy. Uh, this is normally going to be one of your main going first pieces when you have to go first. You can also use it going second if you have an excess of uh, utility. Say you can't kill your opponent because you've dark rulered them or if you use pot and you can only do half damage. You can set this up afterwards and mean that they don't get an next turn and then you kill them the turn after. Pentastag, this comes up all the time. There's so often your opponent just leaves a position where you can just kill them in one shot. Like the amount of times where I just need to make this in Conductor and I win the game is ridiculous. Just an absolute must play card. People really sleep on it. It's just absolutely wild. Nightmare Phoenix, just good utility. It doesn't come up too often because normally you're going to make Tornado Dragon instead, but there are occasions where this can be, I guess, slightly better because you want the materials directly into Grave rather than just one of them in Grave and all that kind of stuff. It does come up occasionally. Uh, it's not too important. Cyframe Lord, Lambda. This is so that we can obviously just keep resolving those gammas. It can also just help to get bodies in the Grave. Um, you can also frustrate your opponent by setting this up if you don't have any other options. You just want to get bodies into grave because they just assume you've got a gamma then and try and play round one, which can, can have its benefits for sure. We then move on to our rank ones. So we've got Abyss Dweller, uh, probably the best rank four in the game. Tornado Dragon, one of the best rank fours in the game. Uh, Degares, you can OTK with it. You can dig deeper. You can do all kinds of good stuff with this card. It's just absolutely fantastic. We have a single copy of Lagia. This isn't one that I was going to run in this particular build. Uh, I actually ended up running this because they didn't have a Dolker at the time and I just borrowed it. Uh, and it just happened to still be insane. Like it, there's there's occasions where this comes up is really, really strong and the better option to go for. More often than not, you are going to want to make Dolker, which we have here. But Lagia does come up as well. Just a single copy of Dolker. We then move on to our fusions, which is slightly different. Fusions, you may say. Well, we have Starving Venom. We have Mud Dragon of the Swamp. Obviously, these are super poly targets. Along with Construct and along with Winder. Also, Fusion Super Poly targets uh we like i say i'm playing against a lot of invoked shadol decks um you can just scupper their entire board with these it's just really really good of course lock them out in their own game really really funny to do that they don't see that coming and then of course mud dragon and starving venom just two of the best generic uh super poly targets and like I say, the extra deck for the other one that uh, the Christian's build was, uh, he was running a Shadol package, but because he was running Shadol stuff in the extra deck, I'm uh, in the side deck, sorry, that's not what I'm doing in this particular build. And then finally, we move on to our side deck, of course. As I mentioned, some of this is tailored to my own locals, and some of the ratio is a little bit weird, uh, mostly because the cards weren't available or whatever at the time, but it just seems to have worked out quite nicely. So, triple copies of Nibiru. It's Nibiru. Uh, the sum decks are just auto loose to this card. The other good thing about this is that if you give your opponent a token as well, uh, Lost World is still relevant here because it doesn't matter what the token is, as long as there's a token on the field, they can't target your stuff apart from the token. So this is still really cool. If you nugget your opponent, they can literally fuck themselves so bad afterwards. It's unreal. It's even stronger in this deck than it is in other decks. Absolutely fantastic. A must play in the side deck, in my opinion. I think this one was actually omitted from that particular build. I can't remember, but this is definitely one that I would highly recommend playing. We then have triple copies of Droll. This is insanely strong at the moment. Uh, I believe highly underrated. Um... This, this card comes in and out in formats. I think this is just one of those formats where it's really strong. I'm probably wrong to say it's underrated. That's probably the wrong word. I don't know. Anyway, Droll is really fucking strong at the moment and definitely a card that you should consider be playing in your deck, particularly with the likes of Dragon Link, particularly with the likes of Invoke Shadol going absolutely insane. This card can shut off so many decks that other hand traps just really don't have an effect on. And then I have a single copy of a disgusting Gold Rare Lancia. Uh, they just thought this was memes at this point to just keep giving me the fucking disgusting Gold Rare cards. Uh, Lancia's Lancia. This is obviously so that we can use it in conjunction with Sanctum. 
Uh, it means the Sanctum's actually worth running. If you're not going to run this, then you might as well just cut these. Uh, I was running this at three without this before, and it was just stupid. It didn't do any anything, so there's no point. Um, it just is what it is. This is handy as well, because if you open it, it's kind of good. Uh, but you can also land to your opponent, which is amazing as well and then a final trap card here is a single copy of red reboot i actually put this in because there's a guy who plays like, all the guys to my locals and that's the truth of the matter i fucking hate it but it's okay because i swifted him without needing to play red reboot anyway shout out to you thomas i'm sure you absolutely love this Two copies of dark ruler no more uh it's dark ruler no more this would be a third but Jam decided to just give me two copies instead of three for some reason. So we're playing two. Uh, fantastic card. It does what it does. And then to finish our side deck, it gets more disgusting again. Super Poly in Gold Rare. That's right. All this money that they've got to spend on these nice cards. Hemman sat there with all these Starlights and fancy shit. And I'm out here with absolutely disgusting Gold Rares. Here we are, people. It's okay, though, because it triggers people even more when they get Super Poly with one of these absolute monstrosities. This card is fantastic particularly at my locals again it's gonna be different for everyone but that's the point here is that this works at mine you just shut off so many different decks just or i lose this card they can't respond it just absolutely fucks them now as i said we are probably going to look at playing the scrap variant at some point so uh, this will change that's exactly why i wanted to bring you this list now before it's no longer relevant before we change it up so you guys who aren't looking to play the scrap variant can have some ideas of exactly what you should be looking at playing or at least have builds that you can try out so you better understand the deck whether it's so that you can pilot it better or so you can play against it better and that is all for today's video thank you very much for coming along by virtue of the fact that you made it this far into the video, hopefully you have enjoyed it enough to hit subscribe, or at least hate it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. Whichever one of those categories you fall into, thank you very much for making it this far. Now it is worth noting that this isn't the only kind of content we do on the channel. We also do locals vlogs, combo tutorials, how to play videos, any kind of educational videos, and pretty much everything in between. So if there's something that you'd like to see on the channel that maybe you think I haven't covered or you'd like to see more of, definitely reach out and let me know. I take the time to read as many comments as possible, and I do respond to most of my social media interactions. But anyway, that's enough of your day taken up with one Yu-Gi-Oh! video. Thank you very much for coming along. Hopefully, again, you've enjoyed this enough to hit subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.